going y'all welcome back to the chaos I'm Ryan and today's video is actually inspired by a subscriber so they had just bought a 2008 Dodge Viper just like mine and they were curious on how to actually lift it properly using just simple floor jack and jack stands so scour the internet unfortunately there's really not any videos out there showing the the process but i know when i first got my car i was struggling with this same concept so i had to go digging through message boards and forums to try to figure out just how to how to lift the car safely so um no expert <laughs> so i'm just going to go ahead and throw that disclaimer out there that i'm just a guy that likes to tinker on cars in my home garage so no mechanical background just a car enthusiast that wants to get his hands dirty from time to time so take that as you will but I'm going to show you a few different ways to raise both the front and rear of the car. And again, this is the way I do it. So we'll start at the front because that does tend to be the easier end to do. So we'll start at the front and work our way back. First things first, this is what I'm working with. So I just have a simple low profile Harbor Freight jack. It works fine. And then a couple jack stands. So that's all you really need. There are actually four nubs that stick down on each side of the car past the side seal. So those are your jack points. So I've got them marked just for visual reference on the outside of the car. I'll show you here in a second. And then I'll show you what they actually look like underneath the car, but there's four of them. And just because I don't want to have to lift both sides, it's the car symmetrical. So I'm only going to demonstrate everything today on just the passenger side, but it applies to the driver's side as well. I'm using our jack stands as a visual reference point but those little nubs hang down in the front there and the rear there. So just in front of the exhaust cut out and then just below like the E and Viper. This nub hanging down, that's where your, that's your jack point. So right now we are on the front passenger side. So it's just behind the front tire, but you'll see this nub sticking down and precision is key for this whole process. Making sure you're not actually gonna damage your side sill. Here we are at the rear of the car. So kind of this black part is the exhaust surround. And then you'll notice right in front of that is another one of those nubs. So this is the point to where you're going to want to jack from as well. I can't stress this enough, but precision is key. Like I said, you don't want to damage the car. So you want to make sure when you're putting that the actual jack under there, where that little pad goes, you want to make sure it's only making contact with that nub and not your side seal itself. So. We're going to get it in place and then I'll show you exactly where I, where I like it to land and how we are going to jack it up. Now that I got it perfectly centered on that cup to where it's not gonna to touch the side seal or anything, I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then we'll actually jack it up so you can see. So you can see our nub right there and then I'm gonna slowly come up on the jack so our jack's rising and you can still see, looks like there's a nice gap in there. So we're making contact at this point and we're losing <laughs> visibility on the camera, but hopefully you're able to tell that there's, it's kind of centered on that cup. There's enough like wiggle room on both sides to where I'm not going to touch the side seal and then yeah, we're just going to slowly go up with it. I have the front raised up and don't be alarmed. This chassis is so stiff that when you raise the front, it actually raises the rear as well. So I know the first time that I went to lift this car, it kind of <laughs> tripped me out because I've never had a car do that. But that's just how rigid this, this car is and how stiff it is. But yeah, let's take a look and then I'll show you exactly where you're going to want to place your front jack stand. Still trust me out that it lifts both sides. All right, underneath the car, you're going to notice, so the silver piece over here is our oil pan. That white cylinder thing sticking down, that's our oil filter. So just to the right of that is our like frame rail. So you don't want to put it on any of those coverings. That's carbon fiber, plastic, that kind of stuff. You don't want that to break. But you have that nice solid frame rail right there that we're going to slip our jack stand into place. By the way, it definitely helps to have two people just so that way you got somebody kind of under the car positioning your jack stands and all that kind of good stuff. And you have somebody actually manning the jack, but you can't be done with one person. It just takes 
double the amount of work because you got to look under the car make sure it's set right come back to the jack and keep doing that it's a fun little game but got the jack stand in place like i said we're just kind of looking a uh, nice point on that frame rail and then we're just going to lower the jack onto that rail so there you have it i just lowered the car down onto the jack stand itself and i always because i'm a little <laughs> A little nervous or whatever, a little chicken, but I always just leave the actual jack in place as well. So, I mean, at this point, if you're trying to do a brake job or just take your tire off, you're swapping, you know, got a flat, you need to take the tire to the, to the shop, whatever it may be. At this point, you're safe to do so. You can take that tire off, but that way you have the jack stand underneath there, but then you also have our jack is kind of like a secondary measure. But easy as that. So if you're gonna do, if you needed both sides jacked up, same thing. You would just leave your jack stand on this side, scoop the jack on the other side, same procedure. Grab that little nub, jack it up, place your jack stand. And then, like I said, I, I usually, I actually have two jacks. So I <laughs> want that extra safety measure. So I just leave it on both sides, but you can do it with one. But like I said, I'm just gonna show, demonstrate on the one side today, but this is all there is to it for the front. So let's move on to the rear because there's a couple different tactics for that. Also wanted to point out, so like I was saying before, when you lift the front, it lifts the rear. So for extra, extra protection, what you can do because the rear is so lifted up, uh, you can actually throw a jack stand down underneath where like your jacking point on the rear. So that gives you three points of contact that's kind of holding the car in place to allow you to do whatever it needs you need to do on this side of your car. With the rear, it does get a little bit trickier. Um, what I normally do, because if you're basically, if you're doing any type of maintenance, be it on the rear end or anything, that undershield, the undershielding that goes pretty much the length of the car, kind of covers up your like transmission tunnel and your drive shaft, all of that, and the rear pumpkin, all of that would have to come out anyway depending on what you're doing but so at that point like i would just recommend lifting the <laughs> front and removing that under tray because that will allow you 100 percent access to the rear now if you're just changing a tire you can do about it uh one of two ways so you can either lift it in the middle of the car and raise both tires at the same time or you can do side by side with the jack points so we'll start with the jack point on this side and then we'll work our way to the to the very very back but Let's go ahead and get the front down, get the car back level, and then we'll start tackling the rear. Just like I did with the front, I'm going to get the jack situated, show you how I like it, make sure we have clearance so we're not touching that side seal, and then we'll actually go up with the car. So let's get the jack in place. Just like with the front, we got a nub down here and then our jack pad and I've tried to center that up. So I'm just gonna go up slowly just to show you. And actually looking at the angle right now, I actually don't like it as much from this side. So we're gonna readjust a little bit. But again, I wanna make sure I'm very careful not to grab my side seal. We're making contact now so you can kinda See that, the wedge in there, that triangle wedge, got that centered up, it's nice and even on our cup, and now I can slowly go up with it on the jack. But again, I'm just gonna kinda jack a little bit, make sure I'm not hitting the side seal before I start really pumping on it. And again, with that rigid frame, when you lift the rear, it also lifts the front. So I feel like it isn't, isn't as dramatic as it is when you lift the front, but that front tire is still off the ground. And for extra safety measure, because I don't ever just trust the jack itself, we want to put a jack stand under there. So I'll show you exactly where I stick that. And with this one, I'm not using it so much as like an actual pressure point. I think it'd be fine, but I use it, just <laughs> use it as that that safety net so i'll show you what i mean over here in the corner we have our jack and our jack point and then up under here you actually notice there's like this triangle portion of the frame 
And what I actually do is I will slide and kind of wedge it sideways the jack stand so that way it'll rest on this portion of the frame. So you can see I got my jack stand under there and then I'll just kind of lift up and kind of get it in place. So you'll notice, like I said, I've kind of got it sideways because you don't want to pinch that, that rubber seal right there. But I figure if the car is going to fall, even if it's going to damage just a little bit, I'd rather it fall on that <laughs> pretty solid frame rail than my head. But although, like I said, I'll kind of lower it down just a little bit because there's still a, a decent sized gap. So I lowered it just enough that our jack is in place. It's not going anywhere, but that gives you full access now with both the jack stand as their safety measure and then it jacked up over here on the side with their jack. Now you can crawl around a little bit and not, not feel like the car is gonna fall on you. So we're gonna call that method one for the rear. And like I said earlier, realistically, if you're gonna do any type of major work on the car, that under tray has gotta come off. So it's really only if you're doing tire changes and brake jobs that this will suffice. But let's get the car down and then I'll show you how to raise both rear tires at one time. Method number two to lift the entire rear is actually a little bit jack dependent. So there's a little hole in that under tray just big enough for a particular type of jack. My jack doesn't work, so I've had to enlist the help of a cheap little hockey puck, but that the square that's cut out is like perfectly sized for a hockey puck. So it's actually three inch in diameter. So I feel like that hole under there is like 3.1 inches because <laughs> it just barely fits in there but there's like a crossbar is what you're aiming for. And if you get on that crossbar, that's what will lift the entire car. So you can do it with the under tray on. Again, all of this is infinitely easier when you take that off, but you might not necessarily need to do that. So in that case, this is the method you can use, but we're gonna throw this on our jack and then aim for that hole in the middle. So my jack pad itself is actually too wide to fit through the hole, but we take our hockey puck and that way it holds tight in here. It's not really going anywhere, but this allowing the puck to sit in here, that is the perfect size to fit through our under tray hole. So we're going underneath the car and at the very front of your diffuser, I've used a red solo cup as my visual marker. That is where the jacking hole is. So you can see our hole in the under tray and I've got my hockey puck. And like I said, it just barely fits in there. So you kind of have to really, it'll get wedged in there, but it works, I promise. So it's like the, the perfect size. But that way, this will lay flat enough to make contact with that crossbar under there. And you can lift both rear tires at the same time. you're able to see that but what I kind of do is just wedge that hockey puck through that hole in a place so that way because it's easier once I get that hockey puck lined up there and flat it's easier then to get the jack cup perfectly aligned so that way when I go up it'll be everything will be nice and flat and the way it's supposed to be to lift both rear tires so I've just got just a little bit of pressure on the puck just to make sure it's in the cup and now we're going to do like we did with the size and just be very easy. Make sure we're going up slow and taking, taking it easy. Keep an eye on it. Make sure nothing is getting pinched. So that's method number two. This isn't necessarily my preferred method because anytime I'm ever working on the car, it's I either just need a tire off or something like that or I'm going all in and I have to take the under tray off. But like I said, I ain't doing that today. <laughs> this is for demonstration purposes only. But um, once you get it up in the air, then I'll kind of treat it the same. So now you actually have those two jack points as jack stand points. So now your rear nubs are free to then slide a jack, one on this side, one on that side. And again, I would leave that jack itself in place even with the jack stands just because i like the extra measure of safety now that the rear of the car is up we got some better lighting under here so now you can actually see my hockey puck trick so it just wedges in that little hole 
and that allows us to grab our jack and get both rear tires up at the same time. That was method number two to get both the rear tires off the ground, but let's go ahead and lower it and we're just gonna be very careful, very easy, so don't drop the car, but just take it down nice and slow and get it back on all fours. Unfortunately, not everybody is lucky enough to have a lift in their garage or access to a lift. So if you're like me and you're working with just simple hand tools and simple floor jacks and jack stands, hopefully this will you'll find this helpful. But leave your feedback in the, in the comments below. Hopefully, like I said, that was the, the goal of the video is to help some of y'all out. I know when I first got the Viper, this is my dream car. I was actually, I was scared to work on it, scared to touch it. So hopefully this will inspire you all to actually go out there, get your hands dirty, and don't be scared, it's just a car at the end of the day. So although a fancy quick lift setup or lift itself will be nice, it is possible, 100% possible, to work on your Viper just with simple, simple hand tools. I really appreciate everybody watching and I love the interaction we have. Like we kind of built up like a nice little community, so I'm not a very big channel and that's fine, but I love interacting with y'all and if you have any more ideas for videos or something in particular you want to see, let me know. I'll try to accommodate. Make sure you leave that down below. But thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. We'll catch y'all in the next one.